The date is November 9th. We're in Corpus Christi, Texas. Your interviewer is Hilda Lauber. I'm John Lauber. And we're interviewing Chief Red Fox, Chief of the Sioux Indians. Chief, the purpose of this interview is to record your voice and your experiences as living history. And you are definitely part of our American history. Let's go back into your beginning. When and where were you born? I was born on the 11th day of June, 1870 at Thunder Butte of Dakota Territories. My mother was White Swan, the sister of Crazy Horse, and my father was Wombly Sapper Black Eagle. Did your uh, tribe travel the plains? or We were Plains Indians, but way back in the year of 600, we were in the Carolinas when we came from around Guatemala and up north. We didn't come from the north to the south like a lot of people think. The Eskimo is a Mongolian, and he came across the Arctic Circle. Uh, through the quakes and quakes and volcanic eruptions, it, it headed us people nautically. Now, like the Choctaws and Chickasaws, they belong to the family of the Mayans. I see. They came uh, from Central America. Central too. America. And your tribe went on north, farther than the we, Cherokees. Uh, we settled in the Carolinas where the, the Fair River and then we came uh, west, and some left Memphis and went down uh, to the St. Francis River, what they call it now, and then they came across the plains in the panhandle of Texas and through the Rattoon Pass, and then they went northerly and northeasterly to the Nebraska and the Dakota lines, and the others went up the river beyond St. Louis and hit the Missouri River and went on up and settled around where Bismarck is mm -hmm. and also Omaha, right? And then on the Nebraska line, the Santis Indians, right on the Nebraska and Dakota lines. I see. Were you hunters then? Oh, we hunted, uh, we always hunted. That mm -hmm. was our living. But we, see, when our ancestors went to the plains, there was no horses. The horses were brought here by Cortez, and the first Indians ever used a horse was the Utes in 1627, 110 years after the first seven horses were brought to this western hemisphere. Did, did you do any farming or any agriculture at all? We didn't do any farming or agriculture there. See, we exchanged our buffalo hides and buffalo meats uh, to the Indians of the eastern parts of the country and same way the timber indians for their fish along the great lakes and also the mountain indians you see in the month of november there was no such a thing as a a, a war amongst the indians because this was the wapaton a peaceful moon and we uh, always exchanged our necessaries of living i see uh, what kind of a home did you live well, in? Well, first when we went to the plains, we lived in sod houses. But the rains and the snows and all, it uh, destroyed them by the moisture in them would fall in. And then the Indian discovered one time he was sitting underneath of a cottonwood tree and the leaf blowed off of it and accidentally he covered his uh, around his fingers and as soon as he had a little at the top and big around at the bottom. And they took that and showed it to the women in the village. And then they took a long stick and drawed a line of 32 feet. And then uh, they put a stake in the center of that and a sharp stake on a, on a uh, buckskin string. And when they made the circle all the way around there, they had a half a circle. And then they tied three poles together and lashed 16 more in. They called them lodge poles, about 20 foot from the ground. And that made the teepee uh, from pole to pole the same distance as it was from the ground to where they were tied together. Did you have any decorations on your teepee? Uh, well, we used to draw the family trees on them and what uh, of the history of our people, and what clans we belonged to, like the uh, people of the Alaska used to carve them in the totem pole. See, no, no uh, Indian in this United States, of course, Alaska's the United States now, but before, they didn't have a totem pole. The first totem pole uh, uh, in Washington State 
was put there at the time of the Yukon Fair in 1907. It was towed out of the harbor of Sitka, Alaska. Mm -hmm. Now, the decorations on the teepees, did you have them on the inside or no, the outside? No, on the outside. We mm -hmm. didn't have no decorations on the inside because, you see, the poles was all there. And then, in fact, we didn't live in one teepee. We had many. I see one family no. did not live no, in one no, teepee. No, no, no. That's all wrong. That They see that in TV shows, movies. Uh, see, the children was uh, bedded to suit the ages, and the males and the females didn't sleep in the same teepee, nor the parents. One family would have several teepees? Yes. Were they like rooms in a house, like one yeah, for kitchen, but they didn't, one for sleeping? Yes, they didn't join. They uh -huh. didn't join each other. They were individual places. Mm -hmm. Now, you used hides for your teepee. That's correct? in the beginning, but in the 18th, in 1885, and from then on to now, uh, the United States government issued canvas because, you see, the buffaloes, the last hunt was 1877, and we had no more buffalo hides. Mm -hmm. uh, Whose job was it to erect the teepee? The women erected the teepees. The Indian women con governed and controlled the villages. They fixed the sites and everything out. The Indian women governed the villages. And what did the men do? What was their responsibility? Well, the men's responsibility was uh, to hunt and fish, not for sport, but for a living, to protect their families from the enemies. And that's the reason why the Indian women carried the burdens to leave his hands free, to kill the game on the journeys, and also to protect them if the enemy would make them attacked. Yes, now I've heard some people say that the men had it easier than the women. No, this is uh, not true. No, everybody had their duties to do. I think the American women had a harder time than the Indian women ever did, because they go to work early in the morning and they work, and their husband probably sits around the office and talks on the telephone, Half past three in the afternoon, he quit, and they go in and have a beer, and then they go to work and play a game of cards, and she had to go home. There she has her household to do, and he comes in about six o'clock and says, Turn on the radio. I want to hear the news. Where's my slippers? I want to take off my shoes. And why your flowers look so wilted out there? Why don't you water them? Look at your grass. It's almost a knee high. And there she has just started supper to get, children to care for. And all I think the American white women got the dirty deal. I'm glad to hear you say that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Indian women, the mothers of the children, did they actually train the children? Oh yes, them? oh they yes, did? yes. We see that was our teachers. My grandfather taught me all about trapping and trailing. I'm a good trailer. It used to be my eyes ain't so good anymore, but I used to be a good tracker. Mm -hmm. Now your, what grand, did your grandfather taught you about Oh, that. yes. Uh, oh, yes. Your grandmother taught you... Uh, uh, grandmothers taught the girls. Oh, the, I see. The way to, to tan hides, the way to uh, use the porcupine quills for decorations and the beads when they were brought here by the white man in 1734. And uh, they taught them how to uh, preserve stuff and keep it, you know, for the winter, dry the foods and stuff. So the grandfathers taught the young boys, yes. the grandmothers taught the young yes. girls, yes. which left the mothers free to yes. uh, take care of the homes and yes. planting what crops yes. that you... The did, men I did think. a lot of the planting too, you see. Mm -hmm. At my home, we didn't plant no crops mm -hmm. because we were a roving people because when the buffalo eat all the grass and went south, we went south. When the buffalo came north, we came north. Mm -hmm. What areas uh, did you travel Dakotas, in? Dakotas, Dakotas, western Nebraska, the Dakotas, and Montana, and the uh, central part of Canada, where Saskatchewan, Alberta is. Mm -hmm. As a, a young boy, can you remember what kind of games you played? Well, we didn't play many games when I was a little fella. You had chores well, to do? I, oh, well, we used to uh, gather up uh, the buffalo chips, you know, but we used the fuel because we didn't have the timbers. And we never made big fires like you see on the movies because that was dangerous. It mm -hmm. would set the prairies afire, 
and attract the attention of the enemy. And we made small fires in our teepees in the center of them uh, that would keep it warm. Mm -hmm. When you uh, say you didn't play many games as a boy, no. what was most of your time spent doing? Well, we would learn things. Our grandfather would take us out and show us observation, how to learn or find our ways back to the villages and stuff, because we didn't have no signs or anybody to ask. Mm -hmm. That's the reason I have a photostatic mind. Mm -hmm. Did you have any experiences when you were a young child that... Uh... Well, I had the experience at the time of the Custer's fight, and just before that, when we left the Dakotas uh, from Montana, where we traveled over that hot, dusty prairies on the tray boys the little children were, and the old men and women, that's two poles lashed to the back of a horse. And then, you see, right after the Custer's fight, I was sent to the United States government Indian schools. I was nine miles from that battle when it was fought. My uncle with Custer in 40 minutes. What, uh... How old were you then? Six years and 14 days. Then your tribe was involved in Custer's oh, Yes, thing. Custer had no business to come there. Did you, uh, did you ever hear your people talking anything about uh, Black Kettle's massacre? Yeah, Black Kettle, and yeah, sure. Black Kettle was the Cheyenne from Wakanda Springs, Kansas. And then through there, they killed 52 women and children, not a man in the village, and then Custer took a 14-year-old girl, Black Kettle's daughter, as his mistress, and she gave birth to a child that was named Yellow Hawk. Oh, is that right? Yes, sir. When, um... Custer, Custer uh, wouldn't have been the United States Army if it wasn't for the Civil War because he graduated with the lowest grade of any man at West Point. He wasn't a general, he was a lieutenant colonel. No man knows when he fell, no Indian ever claimed the honor. As I tell him over the TVs and in the newspapers in Washington, D.C., uh, to go to General Terry's records, he found out he only has one scar on his body, a, a powder burn on his temple. Either he shot himself or one of his soldiers killed him, leading him into the jaws of death. Mm -hmm. Did the Indians set a trap for him and lead him into that? Uh... No, sir. We, we were prepared for him. We knew from the 17th of June when he left Fort Lincoln, uh, right where he was all the time. We were prepared for Custer with the Cheyenne Chief Tumun to the Cheyennes from the Northern Cheyennes on the Tongue River. He wanted to get Custer. We didn't want to kill those other men. We wanted Custer to kill those women and children. That was down in uh, Oklahoma. Uh, that was on the Washtar River. Yes. Yes. What other tribes were involved in Just the Sioux and Cheyennes, that's all. The Crows was scouts was with Custer. Curly the Crow, Harry Moccasin and them. Curly was the only one under his command that was in the battle. Now there was three white men that wasn't with him. Uh, one was the name of Theodore Grogwin. He was a regimental sergeant. He died at Dousman, Wisconsin at the Masonic home in 1926. And a fellow a trumpeter by the name of Mar Martini, but they called him Martin. That died at Lorain, Ohio in 1918, and then Knipe, who was left with some six soldiers up on the Rosebud River, uh, uh, he died over at uh, Asheville, North Carolina in about 1930, or 32 probably it was. Those three were with Custer, but yes. they didn't go to the Little no. Big Horn. Yes, they were there, but uh, uh, Goldwyn went after Gibson for reinforcements, and the other one af went after Terry. Do you know how many uh, Indians were vo involved in well, the fight and how our many white? Well, uh, our people claim there was about 8,500 Indians? Uh, Indians. And we were better prepared in the United States Army because we had better guns. You see, we had the modern Winchesters and the repeaters at the War Department that the Washington refused to accept. They had the short-range Springfield carbines. I see. And we... we we were better horsemen. My uncle, they teach his tactics today, crazy horse tactics in the United States Army. He was still but, living today? Oh, no, no. He was murdered on the 6th day of August, 1900, 
1877 at Fort Roberts, Nebraska, under the flag of truce, the same way they shot Sitting Bull in the back of the head December the 15th, 1890, in Carson County, uh, South Dakota, uh, on the Grand River. And they killed 200 of our women and 90 men on the 29th of December, 1890, at Wounded Knee, for the revenge of Custer, and because the 7th United States Cavalry didn't have any troop flag, and we gave the flag back to them in 1925. We gave them their troop flag. Mm -hmm. It was taken from... Uh, 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 the command of Custer lost it at the Custer's fight. Mm -hmm. The only way to get it was to regain it, and they thought they would do it at Wounded Knee. You see, they never teach that in any of our public schools. They call that a battle, and the Indian Bigfoot didn't have any guns, only a few of them, and the women were so hungry that they couldn't, didn't have enough milk in their breasts to feed their babies. This was at what? Uh, Wounded Knee on the Pine Ridge Indian Reservation, the 29th of December, 1890. They killed 37 of their own soldiers and wounded 44, and our left arm wounded lay out there till the 1st of January, uh, 1890, and uh, they uh, uh, took their soldiers on into the military uh, posts to be treated, and many of our wounded ones froze to death. And then after that, they picked those bodies up and they dug a trench and threw them in there just like cordwood. And, uh, Nobody knew where, what exact part of that uh, trench what their loved ones was laying. And we put a curbing around that and have a monument up there, wounded knee mm -hmm. there. And I knew a lot of Indian women and all that was wounded and, and men that was wounded and got away, but they followed those women and children. They even shot uh, women with little babies on their back. I have government records to show, uh, written by a United States a Commissioner of Indian Affairs of Wounded Knee, but they never, we made a picture of that one time and the United States government seized it. Um, can you tell me something about the Indian scalping? Well, the scalping, the scalping started by one Patch Hamilton. One Patch Hamilton was a British officer and they were on the west side of the Mohawk River, uh, right out to Mexico, 58 miles west of Auburn in New York, at a little place they call Scotia now. And uh, Red Jacket uh, of the Iroquois and Corn Planter of the Mohawks came down there and they were friends of this general. And he took his knife out and cut a button off of a French soldier's coat and then took the lock just a little lock of hair off of the head around, about the size of a quarter probably, mm -hmm. cut around. And he told them for everyone that he brought in, they would give him a sovereign and rum. And they, the French went over and got the Mohegans and Hurons to scalp the English. But the Cumpsy, who was a Shawnee, he would scalp for either side that paid him the most. So the idea originated uh, with the white, white man. White man, yes. You never heard of them scalping the pilgrims? Mm -hmm. The Puritans? We fed them. You mm -hmm. never yeah. heard of Jamestown, the colony in 1607? We never uh, harmed them until the John Smith wasn't captured by po Pocahontas. Uh, I mean, Porten, Pocahontas' father. He was captured by Obachica, and he was not a Pamanka, he was a Chickahominy. And Pocahontas uh, uh, asked her father to save John Smith, and she really loved him. And then they deported John Smith back to in England, and she married John Rolfe, and then he, because he told her that Smith was dead. And then when she was at the court of King James, she came face to face with him, and she had given a birth to a child who was named Thomas Rolfe, who came to America many years later and become a statesman and a planter in Virginia. And uh, Pocahontas uh, was grieved and wouldn't have nothing to do with Rolfe, and the queen and king would send her back, and while she was at Gravesend, England, she caught the smallpox and died. and, and uh, 
they bury her at a place that the, in the Episcopal churches, uh, what they call the High Church of England, uh, in uh, uh, close to the place where she was to sail from, a place called Crewe, England, and that's where her body is in a nice shrine there, and they have a custodian. Last time I was over there, a caring for it and for people to sign their names to books. I see. Well, Bishop Whipple. Yes. And Bishop, Bishop Harr and Bishop w Williamson. Now, he has a great-grandson that is uh, head of the music department of the Quincy, Illinois Schools. And they uh, translated uh, the Dakota language into English, you know, the, the dictionaries. And uh, there is only a few of them I see around yet. And uh, now what was this Dakota language? Uh, Indian, that's, Indian well, language? that's the Sioux. We, we were named Sioux by the French, just the same as Columbus called us Indio. There's no such a thing as an Indian in this country, only by name. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There was 58 different stocks of people in North America, not counting Mexico, Central and South America. See, uh, down at Montezuma, they were called the Aztecs. Mm -hmm. And a little fellow up was called the Taltecs and the Chamemapecs. See? Now, if the United States government wouldn't have taken uh, New Mexico, Arizona, Colorado, Nevada and Utah and California into the Union, what would those people be called down there? Mexicanos. Mm -hmm. Because it was under the Mexican flag. The pure Mexican don't have a drop of Spanish blood in him. They're mostly Indian, aren't they? Yeah, they're pure Indian. Whenever they're mixed with the Spanish and and the Indian, they're mestizo. Mm -hmm. And so the the uh, Sioux language is actually Dakota. Dakotas. We are the Dakotas. The Sioux named by Père Marquette Brule Sioux, although we belong to the Sioux stock. Mm -hmm. See, now, the Algonquins was the largest stock ever up in New England. And then the Iroquoian stock run through New York State, New Jersey, Delaware, Pennsylvania, Maryland, Virginia, and the Cherokees belongs to the Iroquoian stock. I see. Mm -hmm. Now, you said right after the Custer battle, you were sent to an Indian school? Yes, I was sent to Fort Yates. Where is that? Uh, in Dakota Territories on the Standing Rock Indian Reservation, North Dakota now. I see. And uh, that's where your formal education well, that's began? That's the first two years that I went to Carlisle, Pennsylvania. Uh, Carlisle is a, um, a missionary school, isn't no, it? No, ma'am. No, Carlisle was always a United States government school until 1919 when they closed it because, you see, the United States government, uh, I mean, the Indian viewer leased that from the War Department. That was the old arsenals during the revolution. The old Hessian prison is still there and all. And when they leased that to the Indian viewer, uh, they were to give it up when they seen the War Department had to... Uh, use the building. So when they brought the uh, disabled veterans across in 1919, they made a hospital out of that and then a, a medical center. And today it's the United States War College and the MP Barracks in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, 25 miles out of Harrisburg. How did you feel as a child going, leaving your tribe and your people and going to well, school? Well, we were so young, we didn't know. No, it was very hard on us at first, but we began. We had good teachers and a good superintendent and good Christian people. And the only weak-minded people, what would insult you, was an Arab people that didn't know any better. <laughs> and my teacher told me, he said, Red Fox, don't pay no attention to them that uh, they, they're not Christians. Well, we still have people like that today, don't we? Well, yeah, we have them, yeah. When, uh, I meet them every day in a supermarket. <laughs> I'll bet you do. Yeah, all some cranks. When you uh, went to school, or before you went to school, were there any missionaries with your tribe? Oh, yes, they were Episcopal and Catholic. 
with the Sioux yeah, Indians? See, the Catholics were uh, there, the Franciscans, mm -hmm. Jesuits, Capuchins, and uh, then the sisters came later. But uh, the, the Episcopal missions, I see all the printer, all the Indians in North Dakota was Episcopal. And all the Indians in what they now call South Dakota was Catholic. See. It's where the missionaries got into them. Do you know in Alaska they have the Greek Orthodox mission? Yeah, amongst the Indians. Is that right? Yes. Did the, in, did the missionaries uh, encourage you to take a Christian name other no, than your Indian no, name? No, no. No, the United States government Indian schools wanted me to do that. I wouldn't do it. So Red Fox is that's your my, Indian yeah, name. Yeah, that's our family name. How do you how do you pronounce your name in uh, uh, Tokla La Luta? Tokla La Luta. La Luta is red. Tokla is the fox. Fox red. See. I see. Uh -huh. Um. After Carlisle. Carlisle. Where did you go? I went to down amongst the parasites in Washington D.C. in the United <laughs> States Indian Bureau. You went to work in the Indian Bureau after yeah, you graduated from Carlisle. Yeah. What did you do? I was a clerk and interpreter, and I didn't like that. Then you went on to uh, law school or something, no, didn't you? I went at two years. Two years to law yeah, school? Yes, and then I went with the Buffalo Bill Circus and stayed to 1898. Where did you go with them? Uh, 1893, that's outside the World's Fair in Chicago, 63rd and Stony Island. You joined them in Chicago then? Yes. I, well, I went and got the Indians from them. Well, you did? Oh, yes. I see. Yeah. You were a recruiter for Buffalo Bill. Oh, no, right? I went around with him, and and he wanted me to, and I did. And and then I said to him, well, these Indians, they asked him who was going to go and take charge of them, and they said, he said, Red Fox. And I said, well, I'm too young. And they said, no, no, you know the white man. How old school. were you then? I was 23, 23 Were you a years. chief then? No, I was made chief in 1904. We were elected. We don't inherit that. Oh, I see. Now, this uh, the title of chief will not be passed down to no, your no, son. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. will, uh, will the title stay with you as long as you live as long then? As long as I live, yes. So you, once you're elected, you're chief for life? Yes, London. yes. See, I, I represent my people yet. I see. Oh, yes. I'm the father of the citizenship bill in 1924. Yes, I wanted to ask you about that. Yeah. Uh, what was the nature of that bill? Well, that was a bill to grant us the rights to be free from being a ward of the United States government and uh, to do away with lots of these guardians that wasn't capable of passing a third grade examination to a boy and girl that's been through high school and junior colleges and to give us the rights that belongs to me by birth. You have given that to every immigrant came here. Mm -hmm. Citizenship rights are rights to cast a ballot. Why not the Indian? You're fighting for the Negro now. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Were you ever on a reservation? I was born on a reservation. Yeah, sure. Did your tribe go down to uh, Oklahoma Indian no, Territory? No, you didn't indeed, go? no. Well, we weren't supposed to go. The Indians in Oklahoma came from the east, the Cherokees from the Carolinas, the Chickasaws from western Tennessee, the Choctaws from uh, Louisiana and Mississippi, the uh, Sac and Fox Indians from Iowa, the uh, Shawnees from Ohio, the Pawnees from Ohio, the Wyandots from Ohio, the Mingos from Ohio. And see, Oklahoma was uh, from 1820 to 1840. They get, began to remove the Indians. And see, they drove the Cherokees because they discovered gold at Thelonica, Georgia. Andrew Jackson drove them like cattle. Uh, people ought to go and get the Trail of Tears and read that, mm -hmm. and they see. And the reason why the Cherokees are divided because Sulla and Walking Stick fled to the Pisgah Mountains and hid mm -hmm. when Ross, the peaceful chief, came over with the troops. 
Now Ross was part white man, wasn't he? Same way, same way Quanta yes. Parker. Mm -hmm. See, Quanta Parker's mother was Cynthiana Parker. Mm -hmm. See. Mm -hmm. uh, do you recall any plagues or illnesses that took over your tribe? Well, uh, they didn't take over our people so bad, but the Mandans yes. up north, uh, they died with the smallpox that was brought in there by brought in there by the buffalo hunters. And then when Grover Cleveland was the mayor of Buffalo, New York, in Erie County, hence uh, there, New York State, uh, they caught the smallpox from a lots of those white settlers in there, and they died but a thousand, and the Sisters of Charity went up in there and made sacrifices to save them. Of uh, the Six Nation Indians, mostly they were Senecas and Tuscaroras that died with the smallpox there. Mm -hmm. We never had those kind of diseases. They were brought here by the white race. Did you have any particular diseases at all or any illnesses Not that you much, had to worry mostly, about? No, mostly all the old Indians died uh, with the pneumonias. You oh, would be right? surprised, yes. Uh -huh. How was most of your illnesses treated? What kind of well, medicine did you have? Well, we had better medicine than they have today. Today they have uh, substitutes of narcotics, you see. But we had what we gave to the world, the herbs the roots, the barks, the berries, the saps that came from Mother Nature. We didn't shoot people in the arm and cause a Wallace Reed, you know, the great movie star, if it wasn't for the narcotics that they shot in his arm to keep him working, he wouldn't become a dope thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, you read every so often today where modern science is yeah. finding out that some of the herbs you use... Yeah, well, we gave to the world that. Yes. And, and uh, then this modern science, see, I don't call them doctors. Mm -hmm. I call them T.O. boys. Mm -hmm. One will watch your right nose, the other look at your left nostrils, and they don't know which one you're going to blow. <laughs> Did you? I was only under the care of a doctor once, and I had a hernia, and I had an operation last June the 12th, a year ago. And I was in, a, uh, in bed about 12... I, I guess about 15 or 20 minutes after they brought me down, I was sitting on the porch, and the nurse came and wanted to put a thermometer in my mouth. I told her I, I didn't need that, and then she wanted to take my blood pressure, and I said they had a cartogram of me, and they claimed that I had a better beat of my heart and, and my blood flowing in my uh, arteries and stuff than a 65-year-old man. And I said, I don't want that. And she said, well, when do you want me to get to give you a shower? I mean, uh, sponge bath and I said to her I'll be up and have a, a shower at six o'clock tomorrow morning and walk in a half a mile before you on duty. <laughs> <laughs> uh, years and years ago did you have a medicine man with your a tribe? A medicine man is like a judge. He, well, the women did the doctoring. I see. The women were the doctors. The medicine man was an advisor. Sitting Bull was a medicine man. We had five. I like you have 12 men of the Jura. Uh, we had five, and whatever the three out of the five rendered the decision, that was right. But see, movie stuff and all puts them jumping up in the air and shaking the rattles and all like that. I never seen them do that, and I'm 99 years old, and I've seen them real Indian life. In other words, the medicine man was part of your governing council. Uh, governing the count. women were the yeah, ones that the did, women the, did the doctrine. The doctrine. Yes. Oh, uh, can you tell me, uh, oh, what, what methods they used? Well, it was the herbs, mostly. The herbs, yes. Uh -huh. Oh, yes. Did they make drinks or uh, well, sure things they, to eat? Or sure, what? they made drinks. Uh, the, uh, the sassafras, roots, uh -huh. and all. And they, did, they, did they use any of these herbs or anything for external application? Well, they used to use this uh, pope root and stuff like that. Uh, they would make a poultice out of the, with cornmeal put on it that would draw the information out. Okay. Uh, what kind of a religion did you have? Well, the religion, you see, we made more sacrifices than the white people do. And God never failed. A uh, rain dance was danced where the white man 
When it's dry, he curses. Mm -hmm. When it's too wet, he curses. Mm -hmm. The Indians and the Chinese do not have any curse words. They can't take the Lord's name in vain. And the Indians made many sacrifices, a sun dance for the prayer that was answered mm -hmm. when the old man was sick. And the supreme creator, Wakanda, well, who is he? What you call God? Who is God, the spiritual creator, the mystery of thy universe? All right, uh, you did like a man came to me the other day and stuck his finger right in my nose, almost. It was a great rough voice. So said, you know Jesus Christ? I said, I heard of him. Do you know him? He said, I talked to him last night. I said, uh, can you talk Hebrew? You ought to see him leave. <laughs> uh -huh. Well, then, your God at that time was uh, not the same God we have sure, now. Sure, sure. You did yes. believe in the same yeah. God. Didn't we believe in the happy hunting grounds? What is that to you, heaven? Yes. Yeah. Well, this is what I mean. Do, uh, I fear not death. Do I die? No. Mm -hmm. my, life, my body goes to rest, but my soul goes on. Absolutely. Yeah. So, uh, well, a lot of people feel that your religion was so completely different and you believed in a different God. No, you just no. named him something Wakanda. different. Wakanda. Wakanda yeah, was another, the name of your God. Uh, that's in the Sioux. And others had different names. Mm -hmm. Now, why did they look to the sun? They never worshipped the sun. The sun is a light and the smiles of the supreme creator. And if that sun couldn't shine upon you and I, we wouldn't exist. No, this sure. mother nature would never produce. Mm -hmm. See? And so in your religion, you believed in a supreme being. Yes. And in the white man's yes. religion, he believed in a yes, supreme being. Yeah, that's right. And how did we teach that to children to fear not death and you do not die? Why did we bury the things that in the grave? Because it belonged to he who died and not me who lived and not have misunderstandings and fights between brothers and sisters over the things. Now that pot of corn that they put in that top of that grave, that was uh, sealed, it was pure corn, like the soul of man should be to have everlasting life. And they dropped that into the ground, up came a stalk of corn. On that came an ear. When that was ripe, they pulled that ear off, but that stalk decayed and returned back to Mother Earth like our body. Mm -hmm. And they shell that ear of corn off and drop it in the ground and it sends forth new life, everlasting mm -hmm. life. Now, why was the stick? They showed the stick had life in it. It came out of the earth. But I throw it on the ground, it decays. Mm -hmm. If I set it in the fire, it goes back to dust, my mm -hmm. bone. Mm -hmm. But the people see that, and they said, those poor old heathen. <laughs> yeah, I had to laugh. I had to laugh at lots of them. Uh, uh, they make we sit back and look and listen to their ideas and their ways and we find out they have a lots of flaws in it mm -hmm. yes that's the truth mm -hmm. see but still because we were uh, di spoke a different dialect and had a different ways now you mean to tell me if there's a supreme creator who's taking care of all people who believed in 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 uh, uh, the spiritual life See, I see him all around me. Mm -hmm. The average person don't realize that. I see what he created. Mm -hmm. right. The mountains, the valleys, the lakes. Mm -hmm. See? Mm -hmm. The forest. Uh, I, a lot, uh, lots of times I used to sit down by my... I, was out of, I had a trading post and had a cave, you know, up in Missouri. And I used to sit there at night all alone, nobody down there, miles off the, the highways where you couldn't hear anything. But I hear, could hear the whispering of the, the winds through the trees, the spirits of the Supreme Creator. I heard what he created, the whippoorwill crying over there. See, the owl over here, the fox barking over here, and the raccoon a grunting over here, see? There's the, there, he had created all, you see? All right, now you know today there are people who are saying God is dead. Yeah. Uh, I feel sorry for them. I well, have a feeling that you do too. They're, they're the weak-minded people. 
Yes, how can they look at these beautiful things and the way, well, for instance, your body works. Yes. And say that there isn't someone more yes. Uh, yes. powerful and uh, yes. a supreme well, being. Well, lots of them never believed, like Bob Ingersoll, see? He was, didn't you ever hear of him? Huh? No. Well, Bob Ingersoll was one of those fellows that didn't believe in God, see? And he was a big man years ago, Bob Ingersoll, many, many years ago. But before he died, he asked to be blessed. <laughs> and a prayer said, pray. Uh -huh. Bob Ingersoll. So he was a believer all uh, the time. What's he call him? The atheist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. The uh, final hour, now, they become now you, religious. You see, I don't know what's wrong with the American public. They've uh, let one woman take the worship of God out of the public schools. They can't even read a psalm. A psalm ain't religion uh, of, of one denomination. A psalm, the, uh, the Lord is thy shepherd. See? You don't say Catholic, Presbyterian, Episcopal, Baptist, it's a psalm to bring the thought to the child. They're not even allowed to say the Lord's Prayer in the school. I started to dance Indian dances, religious dances in the Auburn and New York schools and they stopped me. I ain't allowed to say anything about the spiritual creator when I talk today to the children. That's a shame. In lots of the states. And you let one woman do that. And she was in jail down here at, at uh, Laredo. She was in jail in San Antonio. And I believe she's trying to start a, a colony in, yeah. in uh, uh, Austin, I heard. Is she back in the states? I, yes. Yeah, yeah they, they deported her from Mexico. They wouldn't have her in there. They filled her out. The immigration officers put her in jail, and then she went up to San Antonio and she was in jail. Could you give us a short prayer in your native tongue? Uh, yes, like this. Wokwa lila kota yishi anela manitoba washi ne yiko. Nehe shakapani yihi. O thou great spirit of thy universe, who is the creator of all. In the foliage of the forest, the waters are great, great the mountains are high. The mystery of thy universe, remember us all. Very good. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, uh, you were talking about um, uh, burying your people. Uh, you did bury them in the ground. Oh, we, we used to, not in the beginning. Uh -huh. We made the mounds. Where my foot wants to walk, my body must rest. The head to the east and the feet to the west. And then you bury because some you of see, their belongings with yeah, them. Yeah, all the belongings with them. You see, when they look to the west, that's the life of everlasting. I because see. it continues on. Your son continues on. Now, which which tribe buried them above ground? Well, on the rocks? Uh, well, that that was only done for two weeks on those wojilas, wojilas, and every morning at sunrise and every evening at sundown they had a worship. Then they took them down and laid them where my foot wants to walk, my body must rest. And they laid them there and then built those mounds. How do you feel about the white man today opening these mounds? Well, they should not do it. I don't go into Abe Lincoln's grave down in Springfield, Ohio. I don't go into McKinley's grave over at uh, Canton, Ohio. I don't go into Warren G. Harding's grave over at Marion, Ohio. See? Now, why should they, uh, for research, and what do they know after they get it? Because they, uh, they uh, say they believe this. Now, one time, some doctors, it was this people from one of the institutes in Washington or New York, something, coming out, and a bunch of doctors, they went to work and got a skeleton head out of the hospital, and they put a tube, a uh, little ca uh, capsule, with the day and date that they did this. 
in that, right up in the brain cell. We took a pair of pliers and put it up in the tweezers, I mean. And what did they do? They put that in the uh, way back in this ground and then rolled it and rolled it like it was hard again. And here come these fellows up there. And they dug in there and they found this and they got some instruments and they measured it across and back and jaws and everything. And they put this down there. And one of the doctors said, pardon me, but I'm a medical man. I'd like to see one of those ancient skulls. And they landed, handed it to him and he took this pair of tweezers and put up in there and pulled this capsule out and showed him where they buried it six months before. And uh, Dr. Harrington, his name was, and I forgot, I think it was from the Smithsonian. They beat it back wherever they come from and they never finished uncovering that mound. <laughs> Well, uh, it seems once you lay your people to rest, they ought to stay there. That's right. And now, you see, there's only one man on that battlefield of Custer's. All the rest of them's been moved. But a man by the name of Shields from Brother County, uh, Kentucky, his parents said where his body fell and was buried, let it remain. So he's the only soldier that's left there? On the Custis battlefield, yes. And of course the Indians removed their dead. Uh, well, we didn't have many. We had about 17 or 18. Is that all? That's all. But they were buried, they were moved. Uh, they were not buried there. Uh, uh, no, they weren't buried there. Do you still have some governing power over your people? Do you well, meet at all? Yes, I'm, I'm on the advisory board. How often do you meet? Well, we meet about three times a year. What kind of business do you conduct? Well, about the agriculture, about equipment that we need that the Indian Department issues that's supposed to be our monies, and a, a better schooling, medical attention, stuff like that. It's, it's translated just like your legislative body is. Are you still getting uh, grants from the, uh, the, the government? The government don't give us grants. The government only, uh, the monies of the appropriations, it comes from mineral rights, grass rights, timber rights, and lands that were sold that belong to us under treaties. They don't issue no pension or support us like they do some people. But that's a wrong idea because the Kashasta Indians got $42,000 not long ago out in California, the people began to rebel against that. And that was from the timbers that was of the redwoods that was cut off that the interior collected so much a footing of that. The Department of Interior, just the same as the Osage Indians, the government didn't give them that land in Oklahoma. That was a Cherokee land and when they were sympathizers with Montreal and the Union of South, I mean the rebels during the Civil War, uh, uh, Kansas made it so hard for them that they went on down where they are today and they traded horses. They were Plains Indians. They traded horses to the Cherokees for that grant of land. That's the reason why that was tribally owned and not an individual allotment. Mm -hmm. Mm hmm Did you, uh, when were you elected chief? 1934. I was 34 years old. Uh -huh. Just before I went to Europe the last time with the Buffalo Bill Circus. Well, let's talk a little bit about your uh, experience with the entertainment world. Well, I started in 1893 with the Buffalo Bill Show. And I was with them to 98. And I heard him cry extra paper all about McKinley declaring war on Spain for the sinking of the battleship Maine. We left the Madison, old Madison Square Garden down on 14th Street, not the ones what they have today. And I went over to Brooklyn for the Sand Street, six of us. We went to the United States Navy. Two days afterwards, we were bound across the Atlantic for the Mediterranean going through the Suez Canal to the Red Sea, into the Gulf of Aden, into the Indian Ocean, to the China Inland Sea, just beyond Singapore. And 
24 other Indian boys left, and they came down to the Minger Hotel in St. Antonio. And Theodore Roosevelt and Leonard Woods was down there organizing the Rough Riders. And I stayed I, in Asia I, uh, until 1902. I was paid off at Mar Island, California. And I went back home, and the next year I joined the Buffalo Bill Show, 1903. I joined the Buffalo Bill Show, and, I was, and we went to Europe in 1904. And we were our horses was killed by the French government for distemper. We only had two horses had it, and they sold all that meat over the chopping block, and there we were in Marseille and didn't have anything. J. Pierpont Morgan of the Red Star Line, he brought her wagons and, and canvas and never think back. And then we went to Liverpool, and on the 22nd day of February, 1908, was a Saturday, we sailed for Philadelphia in the Haberford steamer. And we had landed in Philadelphia March the 6th. And Pawnee Bill mm -hmm. was there, and he and Buffalo Bill combined. And I wouldn't work for Gordon Lilly. And I went on over on 101 Ranch. Was there in 1908, 1909, 1910? In the fall of 1910, we started to make movies on the Pacific Coast. And I worked up until 1932. And when I was with the circuses, I used to play vaudeville in the winter because the circus always closed and I told What them. kind of an act did you have? Trick roping. I see. I'm a good trick roper. Some people came in the stores last night, a family, and uh, her husband was a big school man through here, a big superintendent. He could have been in the state superintendent of Texas, and he died. And we used to, I used to be at a camp with him up here at Camp La Hunter. And I used to go to Waldemeyer and uh, Arrowhead, Mystic, at the girls putting on their horse shows, and I'd catch these horses by all four of the feet, by the head, by the tail. I, uh, I can still catch them by the tail, but I can't jump through the loops anymore, but I do flat work, you see. You I know? see. Yes. Uh, what uh, did you think of Buffalo Bill? Buffalo Bill, he only had one enemy himself. Is that right? That's right. He did more harm to his own self, giving away his money, gambling it, and drinking. I had a, a catalog in there that I, for the last two years, in the month of August, I've been putting on the Buffalo Bill Days at Port Leavenworth, where at his father's homestead place, trying to get him to raise money enough to buy that homestead place for a national shrine to him. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had his grandson with me. He don't know nothing about his grandpa. Because he was only six years old when his grandpa died, January the 10th, 1917, at Denver. And they shouldn't have never buried him on Lookout Mountain. Somebody got some money for that. Mm. He wanted to be buried at Cody, Wyoming, on his ranch. Well, I know they uh, took his home that he was buried in, in Scott County, yeah. Iowa. Yeah, Excuse yeah. me, yes. He was born in LeClaire, Iowa, Scott County. Uh, they just completely dismantled his home and took it out to Wyoming. Yeah. And I know people were unhappy about that. Yes. This. See, he was born at LeClaire. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. uh, that's Scotts County. Mm-hmm. Um, I understand. Yeah, he used to live in a place called Princeton up there, too. Yes? Yes, yeah. Princeton, right close to LeClaire. Yeah. yeah. He River in, Town. Yeah, he lived in Princeton. Buffalo Bill, in other words, was a, a good guy. Yeah, he, he only killed one Indian in, in, in his life. Yellow Hand the Duel, 1877 at Warbarnet Creek, when he was chief of the scouts for General Crook. And Yellow Hand challenged the chief of the white scouts, and Buffalo Bill accepted it, and both of them were friends, and they couldn't back down at the time, and the very horse that Buffalo Bill was riding, Tall Bull, Yellow Hand's father gave him. Is that right? Yes. I have that all in the, the magazine stories that's been published.
He was they, loved by all the kings and queens of Europe. Yeah, they treated him with royalty. Now, he didn't get along too well with Pawnee Bill, though, did he? Well, Pawnee Bill and Buffalo Bill, uh, they didn't fight at all, but he didn't like it. But the worst of all was when he went with the Sells Photo Show in 1914 and 15. They called him the Sacred Cow and everything, you know. If you read the uh, uh, Timberline by, uh, oh, I forget who wrote that. Uh, uh, anyway, he wrote Timberline. He gives you the whole story of Buffalo Bill. And in my book, I have about how he took off his hat. His last appearance, the 23rd day of October, 1916, at Norfolk, Virginia. And he said, you American public have been very, very good to me, and this is my farewell. Mm -hmm. and tipped his hat to him and his horse bowed to him and he rolled out and that's the last time he ever was in the show mm -hmm. now the 101 ranch where you joined their wild west show I joined the, the millers yes uh, were they sort of a rowdy group well you know george uh, joe miller was the only one that grover cleveland had ever pardoned for counterfeiting and they only owned a thousand acres of land. They had 101 sections there that they jumped from the Oto and the Ponco Indians, see? And when the teapot zone was going on, they began to cover, uh, uncover this. That's the reason why the government took all that away from them there. Is that what